Okay, so this is the setup to watch the uh, fuel pressure drop per injector activation. Uh, basically, I'm just trying to check the flow and see if they are pretty much close to being equal or if there's one or two that uh, do not seem to flow the same. Uh, I've added a sink on injector one. Um, I'm actually monitoring, out of curiosity, the noise of the injector and then here with the transducer we've got the fuel pressure reading. Alright we got this scope going. Blue channel is the sink, red is the pressure, green is the noise. All right, so let's take a look, see what that uh, looks like. First of all, let's take a look at, this is gonna be our injector trace, and it's gonna be no different than what we're normally used to seeing. That's an injector waveform there. And there's that pintle hump for showing us physical movement. little better look there uh, so that's all fine and dandy it's what we're used to seeing as I said uh, let's take a look at the pressure so that's gonna be in red let's kinda clear this out the way for a moment <clears throat> so oscillations during crank up and start up and you can see it kinda starts to try to stabilize and then we start to go into all injector pulses, it looks like. Let's get our sink down here. So let's take a look. So what we are seeing is, so from blue to blue, that is our number one injector, uh, 720 degrees. Uh, injector firing point to injector firing point and each time an injector opens we're gonna flow fuel into the chamber so we're gonna drop our level of uh, you know pressure because we're creating a leak through opening our injector and so we will see the waveform travel downwards for loss of pressure and basically we can equate that to pretty much the amount of flow per injector per cylinder and you want them to be as close to each other as far as what they look like what they flow amount wise so on so forth uh, to tell us that all our injectors are spraying the same flowing the same uh, fueling the engine the same and not the cause of possible fish bite misfires or completely dead hole misfires, so on and so forth. And so this is one test that I use to check that and you can see that there are dropouts. This is a, a this is an eight cylinder, so we expect to see eight drop off points. And we're still very early on, so it's probably still trying to stabilize. Here seems to be sort of a good section. And we can mark out our rulers and break them out into eight for our eight injectors. So here's injector one. Our pressure drops. Here's the next one in the firing order which I've got written down. So this is one, then pressure drops here. Uh, that's five, four, two, six, three, uh, let's see, seven and eight. As far as some numbers go from, let's see, the top peaks, 59, 
point, or actually 56. Two, let's kind of average it out. We are getting a 1.3 drop. So right now, um, they do look very similar. So let's continue on. Just looking a little bit further down the waveform. Still look pretty close, I'd say. Uh, nothing's 100% jumping out as far as very, very odd and different. Okay, so, and then let's maybe just look one more time. Far out. Again, nothing is really jumping out to try to dissect, uh, I think. They seem to be flowing pretty good. So with that, let's take a look at the uh, noise capture again out of curiosity. See what that looks like or what that shows us. And let's back out. Let's go somewhere here in the beginning. And here's a good example of loud noise activity during our sync point, which we are clamped on cylinder one, obviously, injector. And um, it's going to pick up our loudest amplitude in the waveform each time the uh, injector is being activated. Now, if we get in a little bit deeper, more zoomed, there is a great example of um, two pintle movement noise capturing. So that is basically audibly telling us the pintle clicked when it moved up and clicked when it moved down. And that is these two point um, this is our turn on starting point this is the open uh, on time and then that's when it cuts the uh, voltage and it shuts it off and our pintle movement in our electrical portion that we're capturing and then here it is audibly showing us that it moved and clicked and shut so this is move, click, open, move, click, uh, shut. And we're capturing it beautifully here uh, with the noise uh, waveform that we are getting from the chassis ears. And one interesting point that it's, it's not always the uh, first thing you think about uh, is because we see on and off, uh, we're just assuming that's always the on. Uh, magically, you know, starting open fully type point and then the uh, close point. But it there's a delay from the actual on point, turn on point, and the close point. And you're seeing that delay right here. Uh, so we turned on, we got the full uh, click, probably fully open point right here. And you see the off and the fully closed point right here. Um, and so there's a little bit of delay. And so you've got to think about that when your fuel is flowing. That uh, it doesn't flow right at that point. There's a little bit of delay for the pintle to get off its seat to start the flow of fuel or move fuel. And you're seeing that here also. And to kind of show that with the uh, fuel pressure reading, what I've done is I've marked that same point that we just analyzed and I uh, brought down the uh, fuel pressure reading. And so we're going to open that up again. And if you take a look at our fuel pressure reading, you can see this was our turn on. This is on time, but the fuel starts to drop here at this point 
which is where we see this first audible click. That's when our pressure starts to drop, and then it stabilizes and starts to raise back up at this point during the second audible capture point. So it's not to say that the electrical portion that you're graphing out means nothing as far as exact fueling. It, uh, it's very important to capture that and see it, but you got to remember there's a little bit of the delay or latency for actual physical fuel flow and movement and pressure drop. It's just something you, you cannot get around. Um, and so our fuel flow amount starts here, not at that point. And actually, let's take a measurement in time from the pressure drop to the on time and we've got 2.8 milliseconds of a delay out of let's take the electrical on time 5.3 it's all about half that's uh that's pretty crazy and something you have to think about if an injector is just tiny bit clogged and you're only electrically starting to flow about halfway point from when you were turned on and you're not 100% all your port flows free, clear, or not clogged, you're going to have a fuel delivery issue, which will give you drivability issue, meaning not full combustion and misfires and fish bites and so on and so forth but fuel trim issues uh just you know so on and so forth on the possibilities and uh you've got to you know analyze as much as you can and you've got to remember how um, precise or delicate things are can be or need to be and just for, again, further curiosity, for giggles, let's go to the, let's say, closing point physically uh, where pressure had stabilized. And then our starting point physically of when fuel started moving. And that is 4.4 milliseconds. So it's still open and flowing physically less actual time than the on time electrically uh, which obviously we clearly see because of the starting of flow is after our on time so just just more things to point out and to think about food for thought type of deal uh, just how uh, you know and, and this is a port flow system so quote unquote all technology so if you're chasing Drivability issues, so on and so forth. Uh, keep all this in mind. As far as our pressure drops, uh, we're getting a 1.5, which I think is pretty much where the uh, other measurement I gave, I think that was 1.3 maybe. Uh, so pretty much there, uh, like we measured before. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd uh, bring some of these to light. Uh, show you some testing methods, uh, food for thought, for your imaginations, what can be done, what can be looked at, what can be tested, what you can see um, with the scope and some equipment. And one other thing I want to just point out, if you look at our noise uh, green channel waveform capture, um, as you can see, we are capturing some other activity which is basically amplitude changes uh, we've got some that are higher than others and you can see obviously this is our biggest one and we've got kind of a soft one two big ones soft and one a little bit noticeable and soft soft back to big that in our firing order now, uh, we are on the fuel rail on bank one, right by injector one. And so, I'll give you one guess what the big amplitude uh, blip points that are on the noise waveform channel are. 
So we go injector one, injector five, which is bank two, so it's soft. Four, two, which is our bank one, which is the same rail, so our amplitude's being seen higher. And then we've got six, which is bank two rail, and then the other uh, high point is three, which is the same bank one rail. So we are seeing all our injectors audibly to a point. Uh, obviously the ones on the same bank and rail are being captured a little bit um, with higher amplitude, but naturally it's because it's on the same bank. So don't confuse that with not as loud uh, injector clicking noise. Uh, it's just because it's on the opposite bank. Now some people ask me how I connect the chassis ears uh, to the scope. And basically it's uh, through these adapter leads. Uh, this is the chassis ear which you can get separately on your own. Um, I do make these adapters so... Um, if you guys are curious or interested, you can contact me and I can get you a set of these adapters. So with that, I hope this was a little bit uh, interesting. As always, um, hope you got something out of it. And that's pretty much it for this one. Just fulfilling some curiosity for myself, bringing you guys along. Um, appreciate you guys watching as always. Thank you for the support. And... Um, I think that's uh, going to be a wrap for this one.